A little bit before 2020 hit and everybody was pandemicking, I had switched over to like exclusively using reusable bags and it felt good. And then the pandemic happened and they were like, oh yeah, you probably shouldn't use reusable bags because you know, they might get contaminated. And then I started using the grocery pickup and now I come home with so many bags that it's completely making up for all the bags that I saved back whenever I was using recycled bag or uh, reusable bags. It's pretty lame. Okay, I just got done with my groceries and I was just about to get to work on Thoris and Aria, but I got an email about sorting out some articulation marks on a commission. So I'm gonna knock that out real quick and then uh, spend the rest of the day on Thoris and Aria. Pumpkin, say hi. Say hi, pumpkin. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, who's a good boy? Isn't he the best? Okay, done with that. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about Thoris and Aria. So, um, a long time ago, I started a group called the Drew Morris Ensemble. And I wrote a bunch of pieces for it. It was going to be me and a bunch of band director friends. And I wrote music for it, and we never even rehearsed. Because we were band directors and we were busy. Whenever I started composing full-time, I realized, wait, what if the Drew Morris Ensemble is actually an ensemble made up entirely of me, just recording and overdubbing myself. So I wrote a piece called A2. It's available online if you ever want to hear it. The next piece I wrote, called A4, by the way, the names weren't anything special. I was just trying to be minimalist. The first one was called A2 because it was the second piece I ever composed completely with an audacity uh, recording program. I wrote it, listened to it, and played back over myself. And then afterwards, I transcribed it. So A4 was a piece a little bit later. A3 didn't amount to anything. But A4 turned into something pretty cool. After I finished, I was just like, you know, I don't think I'm done. I don't think I'm done with this piece. I think there's more to it. And I was like, maybe this will be a good opportunity for me to try to do a chamber opera. So I started looking for stories that I could set. Um, I, I just wandered through short story collections and finally came across one called Circle of Flight. Circle of Flight by Richard Stockham. Maybe Stockham, I don't know. And it was published in 1953. Theoretically, it's public domain, but I still have to look into that. But as I read the story... Hi, pumpkin. Give me a second. Okay, if I hold you, will you be quiet so I can talk? Um, as I read the story, I heard my music. Like, it already followed. It was like I wrote this piece to follow the story of Circle of Flight, and I didn't even know it. That was it. Uh, and it's, it's called Circle of Flight, and it has two characters, a husband and wife, Thoris and Aria. Um, and it's kind of funny because those are practically music titles already. You change the T to a C, and you got a chorus and an aria for a song. Yeah, I know, Pumpkin. Maybe he doesn't think it's very funny. Uh, I guess he really doesn't. But um, anyway, so I just started working on it and taking some of the dialogue and trying to set it to 
music and got some stuff sketched out that I was pretty happy with, but then I got busy with other things and I've been looking for a chance to get back to it. So we'll see. I guess Pumpkin really doesn't like it. He thinks I should be only writing cat laborations. Okay. Um, well, anyway, so that's a little bit about it. And now I gotta get to work. Pumpkin, what are you doing? I heard a sound on my shelf and I turned around and this is what I found. Look at that guy. He just crawled up all over things, made a big mess and crumpling things. No. On the bright side, I needed to get this anyway. Don't fall out. Now I have to help him get down so he doesn't hurt himself. Had a pretty productive day in terms of Thora scenario so far. I got to the point where I had a bunch of ideas, so I went ahead and plugged in my computer to the, the piano so that I can start importing stuff. But I keep getting up against a wall where my back starts to hurt me, specifically my shoulder blades. So I just like take lay down in the floor breaks. Or, you know. While I'm working, I kind of get stumped for a bit, so I'll sit there and stare at the ceiling. So I'd say the day's kind of split into thirds. I've got the working on music, third. I've got the taking care of chores, like you might hear the washing machine back there, for the second third. And for the last third is my laying on the floor to keep my back from hurting, third. What do you think you're doing? Pumpkin, what are you doing? What are you doing? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Now just step all over the mixer. Yeah. It's a little farther away than you're used to. 
No pumpkin, you don't eat up there. Well, I had a relatively productive day, but I think I found my limit. There's a bird out there. Oh. That wasn't quick enough. Oh well. Anyway, I had a relatively productive day, but kind of reached a point where my back was hurting from sitting at the piano for all for so long. I think I'm just going to call it and but i do think i've got some mojo going so maybe next time i get to sit down and work i actually have a plan as opposed to just fishing around for ideas which is what today was all about i tweeted out earlier today that for the first time in a long time i felt like a composer today because whenever i initially sat down to make some noises uh some really good ideas were coming and i can't i haven't reached a point where those ideas will make it into the piece yet but I still felt pretty good about it. So, all in all, a pretty good day. But I'm pretty beat, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a day.